What's up, Mentos Hello Fellows, and welcome back. In the previous video where I unboxed the Oculus Quest 2, the one thing I exclaimed I loved is the ability to stream PC VR content to your headset wirelessly. As someone who's used the standard HTC Vive for an entire month before getting the Quest 2, I'd have to say that the wire on that thing was one of the main things I did not like about it. Having to turn around 10 times so the wire doesn't get tangled around your body, and having the wire itself get tangled up is not the easiest thing to manage. Even with one of those VR pulley systems, you still have to worry about breaking your entire VR cable from twisting it too much. So the prospect of wireless VR was very intriguing to me. While the Quest 2 and Quest 1 are the most popular for wireless PC streaming, let's not neglect HTC's solution, which pretty much kickstarted this line of thinking. Of course, this adapter is pretty much the price of the Quest 2, and added this on top of the price of HTC's VR devices and issues with HTC's headsets in general, for me, this is not the preferred solution. Think about it, the Quest and Quest 2 are both under $500. Not only can you stream PC VR games to it, but you can actually play games on the headset itself, and stream videos, and browse the internet, and use hand tracking, all built into the headset. No adapters, no base stations, no extra steps. And I know I sound like I hate HTC, I do. Anyways, I talked about Oculus's main streaming feature, AirLink, which works extremely well, with a few issues that are more or less negligible. However, if you don't like Oculus's AirLink, there are some alternatives. They are ALVR, which I showed off for one second in the Oculus Quest 2 video, and Virtual Desktop, which is the more popular solution. Now, I've seen videos comparing AirLink and Virtual Desktop, AirLink, Virtual Desktop, and the Link Cable, ALVR, Virtual Desktop, and the Link Cable, but not a comparison of ALVR, Virtual Desktop, and AirLink. Also, those videos were uploaded three months ago or earlier, which Oculus this has added a ton of features to AirLink in the meantime. So let's get down to business, starting with the setup processes for each software. The setup process for AirLink is relatively simple. Download the Oculus app, log into your account, head on over to the settings panel, then in the beta tab, turn on AirLink. Now, inside of your Quest or Quest 2, make sure you enable the AirLink setting by going to your settings and under experimental features, tick on the AirLink option. Then on the navigation bar, click on the option that shows the time, and click on the button for AirLink, select launch, and here you will be transported into the Oculus Rift menu, where on the left of the navigation bar there is a new option for AirLink, which lets you control the bitrate of the video being streamed to the headset. This comes in two forms, dynamic bitrate, in which you set a maximum bitrate, and the software tunes the bitrate being streamed to your headset based on multiple variables, such as how fast your Wi-Fi is, how much motion is on the screen, etc, etc. And fixed bitrate, which streams the video in a constant bitrate. This is only limited to 200 megabits a second. Now that doesn't seem like many options, but on the Oculus desktop software, if you go under devices, assuming you did everything correctly, if you scroll down, you should see an option called graphics preferences. When you click on this, you'll see options to change the refresh rate and the render resolution for super sampling and sub sampling. By the way, if you see that the Oculus software isn't detecting the microphone, go to your sound device settings and enable the Oculus virtual audio device headset microphone. Now maybe those settings we just adjusted still aren't enough for you. So guess what? There's even more options you can mess with, especially if you have some performance issues doing this. If you go to the directory where you install the Oculus software, Support, and Oculus Diagnostics, you should see a software called Oculus Debug Tool. This allows you to change a lot of settings, and it may seem overwhelming at first, but let me show you the important ones. Pixels per display override lets you override the resolution that's being displayed on the Oculus software, which is basically what the graphics preference setting does on the Oculus app. Except this gives you more freedom, as you can enter whatever width you want. F OV Tangent Multiplier modifies the field of view being rendered on the headset. I suggest turning this value down if you have performance issues, but if you have an extremely awesome computer, you can leave this value as is. Asynchronous Space Warp. This is actually a very important option. What this does is it compensates for poor performance in games by limiting the frame rate and trying its best to smooth the image you're seeing on your headset, so you don't get motion sick from a bunch of lag. I suggest setting this to auto. And Code Resolution Width. This is the resolution that's being streamed to the headset, which is very different from pixels per display override. The slider and the Oculus app adjust both of these settings at the same time. And code dynamic bitrate. Obviously, this enables or disables the dynamic bitrate. Link sharpening. This is a new feature, which sharpens the image on the headset for a perceived higher quality. This also works for the regular link. And finally, if you want to see how your stuff is performing, make sure you enable this visible HUD option. Another quick thing before we move on, if you want to mirror what you're seeing on the headset on your computer, for example if you want to stream games, there's another program in the folder called Oculus Mirror, which does exactly that. Now that setup was pretty fine and dandy, huh? Let's move on to ALVR. ALVR setup is also relatively simple. Head on over to GitHub and download the ALVR streamer app and the APK file. Run the setup on your PC, ignoring that Windows protected your PC, and when it's done, you'll be greeted with the ALVR wizard, which checks if your GPU is compatible. If you want to stream the microphone to the PC, you'll have to get voice meter, which I don't really like as a software, but you do you. Add firewall rules if necessary, which this is because your firewall could block some of the connections from ALVR to your headset. Set up the speed of the tracking, which I would recommend 
recommend fast so Steam VR does it, but if you want to, you can actually have the headset do it for you. Select your performance preset. Obviously, if you want a better image quality, select visual quality. Now you're ready to stream to the headset. With the APK you downloaded, you want to sideload that onto your Quest or Quest 2. Then in the headset under unknown sources, select ALVR. Then back on the computer, make sure you select trust under the new client section and you're ready to go. Now compared to Aerolink settings, there is a lot more you can do in terms of fine tuning. The video settings are pretty much the same until you reach the bottom here where there's color correction and effoviated encoding, which basically changes the bitrate being streamed based on the FOV. The audio tab is pretty similar, except there's this buffering option, which is basically gives the headset some time to process the audio before it gets sent to it from the computer, which reduces this weird jittery effect with the audio. Headset, which is different from the Oculus software, it allows for you to emulate different headsets, different controllers, and whether you want to simulate room-centered tracking or headset-centered tracking, and also forcing three degrees of freedom, which I do not recommend. I'm assuming this is for compatibility reasons. You can also turn up the intensity of the haptics, which are the vibrations on the controllers. I don't suggest doing this, as this could possibly ruin the motor. Connection allows you to change the protocol that's being used for streaming. I suggest selecting throttled UDP. Now, Starman, I thought you said there was a lot more you can do in this. You've said that the video and audio tabs are pretty much similar. Yes, under the basic settings. But once you turn on that advanced option slider, it changes the whole game. Under advanced video options, you're able to select what GPU you want to use for streaming, change the encoding resolution and game resolution, either by scale or by manually inputting numbers, set a custom refresh rate, reduce color banding, go crazy with the adaptive bitrate, and do more in terms of FOV8 encoding. Under the advanced audio tab, you can select audio devices in a more advanced way, and change more in terms of buffering. The advanced headset tab is where it really gets wild. You can adjust each and every little bit of how you want your computer to detect the headset. That. Same thing with the connection tab. If you know a thing or two about networking, you can modify the ports, bitrate, all that good stuff. And that was pretty much it for ALVR setup. Let's move on to virtual desktop now. Virtual desktop, in my opinion, is a lot cleaner to set up than ALVR. For this method, you want to buy the virtual desktop app on the Oculus Store for about $20 USD. Then on your computer, download the virtual desktop streamer app, run the setup process, and once it's done, enter your Oculus username under the Oculus username section. I'd suggest selecting Hev C for better streaming performance. If you want static bitrate streaming, turn off that automatically adjust bitrate option. Now on the headset, open the virtual desktop app and it should connect immediately. Like, so much faster than the other methods I've just talked about. Now the settings you're going to adjust are actually on the headset itself as opposed to on the computer. It's a lot more robust than Airlink's settings, but it's more user-friendly than ALVR's. The menu labeled settings are virtual desktop's main settings. These are for adjusting the desktop you see in front of you. So let's head on over to the more important streaming settings. Now, like I said, this is a more user-friendly solution to the previous two options. So everything's labeled here. However, I would like to explain a few things here. Synchronous space warp is similar, but different than Airlink's asynchronous space warp. They do pretty much the same thing, but to my knowledge, virtual desktop handles it better. VR frame rate is pretty much interchangeable with refresh rate here, as 120 FPS is the maximum amount of frames your headset will display, under 120 Hertz. This menu is also where that option we disabled earlier is going to come into play because that VR bitrate option would have been limited if we had it on. Similar to ALVR, this is also a Steam VR based streaming system, so you'll need to use Steam VR's mirror mode, and in order to play Oculus only games, you'll need to get Revive. Now that we've set up the things, let's get to comparing the experiences, shall we? Now I could ramble on about numbers in this video, but telling you about the numbers doesn't exactly give you the experience. For me, all I'm worried about in VR is whether it's smooth, it looks good, the tracking is one-to-one, -one, and whether things happen five seconds after I do them or not. So here we go. I use three games as a comparison here. A graphically intensive game, Half-Life Alex, a medium intensity fast-paced game, Pavlov, and a fast-paced game, Super Hot. I could have done other games like Stride and Creed, but I wanted to keep this video simple. Using the same settings for all three methods, visuals-wise, Airlink looks exceptional, especially with the recently added image sharpening filter. It's just a wonderful sight to behold. The refresh rate alongside the naturally high frame rates really completes the visual experience and barely fluctuates no matter what game you throw at it. Virtual desktop I will put up there. It's more often than not smooth and the visuals are on par with Airlink pre-image sharpening. It's great but not as good as Airlink. ALVR on the other hand is a completely different can of worms. Once again under the same settings as the other two methods it just doesn't feel on par in comparison. The visuals tend to be a bit fuzzy a lot of the time, and even though I set it to 120Hz, it doesn't feel like it. It's very jittery and can't keep up more often than not. Now it's kind of hard to display the visual quality here, when not only the recording software compresses the video, but YouTube does as well, so just take my word on this one. If I were to rank these, I'd put Oculus Air Link first, then Virtual Desktop, and ALVR third. Audio-wise, I couldn't tell the difference. All of them stream the audio really well, with a bit of latency, which if you really focus on it, it's noticeable, but other than that, it's pretty much negligible. Tracking-wise, Airlink and Virtual Desktop are pretty much one and the same. The only advantage I'd give to Virtual Desktop in this instance is that it actually has hand tracking, which Oculus just couldn't implement for some reason. 
Anyways, ALVR's tracking is pretty wonky, I'm not gonna lie. The tracking is extremely shaky, which makes the simple task of pressing buttons nearly impossible. It's also horribly inaccurate when you do quick motions. Stopping and starting very fast causes the controller to fling all over the place, which makes it pretty hard to aim. It's still possible, but not really suitable for a competitive setting. Speaking of competitive VR games, when I tried to play Pavlov with this thing, the left controller's grip button just would not work. I couldn't double hand weapons, I couldn't take out my knife, and it was pretty difficult to play because of that. Another weird thing with the tracking, and this is very minor, the trigger button isn't a variable pull, so no matter how hard you press the trigger down, it's either on or off, which once again is very minor, but could kill immersion in some instances. And finally, convenience wise, I'm just going to lay it out, virtual desktop takes the cake in this category. All of your settings and desktop functionality is right there, a user friendly UI design, a customizable desktop space, it's just wonderfully designed. And I think it's something that Oculus needs to work on with Airlink. Despite having native Oculus support, the simple act of taking up the headset and putting it back on can cause everything to just stop working. Not being able to access the Quest 2 default menu at all means you have to rely on your computer to do things like recording, streaming, and if you want to take the load off of the computer and put it on the headset, you can't exactly do it with Airlink, unlike the other two methods I've talked about. ALVR's convenience just lies in the Steam VR menu, but to mess with settings, you have to go into your computer, or do it from the headset with the shaky-ass tracking. No thank you, I'll stick with Virtual Desktop and Airlink. So if I were to rank this category, it would be Virtual Desktop, Airlink, then ALVR. And those were the wireless streaming methods for the Quest and Quest 2. In summation, if you want really good PC VR streaming to your Quest or Quest 2, if you want to spend the money, go with Virtual Desktop. It's a wonderful, feature-packed, customizable software that uses the Oculus Quest 2's features to their maximum capabilities to make PC VR streaming feel just right. If you don't, just use Oculus's Airlink. It gets the job done and in my opinion performs a bit better than Virtual Desktop, but you can tell that it's in beta and definitely needs some more work. And for ALVR, I just cannot recommend it. Despite being in the works for a long time, just because of its tracking wonkiness and poor quality streaming, despite cranking up the settings, Virtual Desktop and Airlink just feel leagues better than it. So I'm sorry ALVR, until you do something groundbreaking, you're just gonna be left in the dust for now. And that was it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, you already know what to do. And until next time, this has been your boy Starman64, now shooting the orbit. Pshh.